Hello my soccer universe. I really had planned to make a Premier League review video last uh, week. I just, with us leaving for it, uh, a trip that I will, you will get a video on that <laughs> soon. Uh, I just could not get it done. I just could not get, get it done. So we have now three rounds to um, to content. In a way it stays within schedule because you know there was a midweek round so I usually try to do Premier League every two weeks so in that sense we are still fine and also then in two weeks we're already having the last round before we go to the World Cup. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, since we have three rounds I just want to point out three stories that you know over the, those past two weeks since we had the last video that really stick out to me. The first, one, uh, the first one is that last time we left we thought that Liverpool had turned the corner uh, having beaten Manchester City in, and deservedly so in a really really good display and everyone really thought yeah Liverpool is back maybe they start. No everything but they got a very very uh, lucky win against West Ham at home to kind of confirm the win over City but what followed then is I think the bigger story they lost to uh, two teams from the bottom side of the table in uh, Not For Nottingham Forest and of course Leeds United at home and questions need to be asked and I'm not saying anyone needs to be fired and and so on I just don't think this is necessary now the break because everyone is playing many many games. Uh, there is something really not right with this Liverpool squad. Is it an off season? Probably, probably. Maybe it's a write off. Maybe you gotta allow Klopp to have another a season that is not uh, going uh, to his uh, or to the club's liking. On the other side, um, I mean Klopp himself doesn't really know what to say. I mean I saw him after the loss to Leeds. He said, yeah, we have to find solutions. And then he kind of uh, flippantly said, one good solution would be to play better football, unless we're not doing it. So, yeah, that's the first story. The second story relates to the team that I'm wearing, uh, which borders the ridiculous. And it overshadows that I really think that this United squ team now is really finding its groove under Ten Hag. It looks more solid. They finally have a midfield with Casemiro and Eriksen. I mean, they, they waited their doors to interplay now uh, in not playing a great game against West Ham. West Ham keeps pop popping up. But overall, uh, a really solid uh, performance. They should have won at Stamford Bridge, for instance. Uh, they were very impressive against Spurs. However, it is two things that just take the headlines. The first one uh, is a much lesser one. It happened in the Europa League. The period of Anthony, who is, of course, driving every proper football man uh, nuts. I kind of understand it, but, you know, enjoy it. But the other one is that uh, young Portuguese fellow. I actually <laughs> wanted to call the segment The Exploits of Young Cristiano C, who... Uh, Cristiano R. <laughs> who after this brilliant performance they had against Spurs just like that decided no I'm not gonna go on and I make it all about myself storming off he was of course out of the squad then and Ten Hag putting down the foot and then welcomed him back and you gotta applaud the man management from Ten Hag for that that one and it is so damning because I think there's so many good things happening at United at the moment and I'm saying this as a non-United fan, but there are many, many good things have happening in United that should take uh, Sansa stage. They need to get rid of this uh, Cristiano guy as soon as they can, but it's not easy. Because he is, a, he is, and this is so sad to see, for all the greatness that he brought in his career, but he is becoming a major distraction. And I think at this uh, stage in his career, he's not, unfortunately, not ready for the biggest teams in the world any, any, anymore. He is now someone who can prop up a, a medium team. That's how it goes. And even those medium teams, it is a really, really trouble. I think, I think after this season, he should get a proper send-off. And maybe he even retires, but I don't see it happening. And then, of course, the last one is the one that relates to the thumbnail. Are Newcastle ready for the big time? I mean, Newcastle laid down a few markers uh, in these um, uh, in these past two weeks. Namely, the win at Spurs, where they really, really shown. And then an Aston Villa team that just had changed their manager and looked actually good. 
uh, really uh, outplaying them again and now moving in the top four spot, albeit it's with a game uh, more than uh, the competition. However, this looks to be a very, very, very solid side. Not a flashy side, but you know, Bruno Guimaraes is uh, probably one of the best players in the Premier League at this very moment. And the squad building was really, really smart. So uh, looking looking out for New Newcastle. They, I'm not 100% that they will finish top four. Although with um, some weaknesses showing at the likes of Liverpool, Spurs, Chelsea... It could happen if they all three really fall by the wayside in in, in, in a way. But I think New Newcastle um, could take the spot that West Ham had and Leicester before them uh, over the past few seasons. On the other side, it doesn't really come as a surprise because, you know, with all the money that's backing them, it was bound to happen and it will happen. It just is more a uh, when than an if. So, uh, briefly, a few. I mean, I said a few things on the, on the games. Here's the midweek round from, you know, mid to mid October. It's it, it uh, time flies so fast with so many games. Um, as I said, the Liverpool West Ham game was the one that really stuck out to me because Liverpool took an early lead through Nunez, looked uh, really really well uh, on, missed a few more chances, but then West Ham got back into the game. They had the big chance to equalize with a penalty. Uh, the Bowen C saved. And then the second half, I mean, Alisson had to come up with big saves. And uh, yeah, again, this was still the time when we thought that Liverpool might actually turn a corner. Uh, at the same time, Newcastle get uh, a win through Almiron against Everton. Nothing really to talk home about at this, at this point. However, the big one was uh, Manchester United's really great performance against Spurs. Uh, completely outplaying them left and right. And yes, uh, Spurs definitely was hampered by those ugly ugly jerseys that they were wearing for no reason for no reason i i i contend there's really no reason that they should wear these uh jerseys however whatever that may be as i said uh fred and fernand get the two goals um and it could have been more this was a very complete performance and then uh cristiano decides yeah he doesn't want to come on in the 91st minute so yeah there you go. Uh, Fulham with a 3-0 over Aston Villa. Uh, seized and finally the sack for um, uh, Steven Gerrard. Uh, and Leicester is also a team that we uh, I have not mentioned. But you know, getting a 2-0 over, over Leeds, getting a little bit out of trouble. The big bummer was that we didn't get uh, to see Arsenal against Manchester City. Uh, that would be a one game that I, I at least was really looking forward to. Then going into the weekend, I mean, I did not plan on anything for it, Liverpool or, or, or whatever. I was taking my post-lunch nap and then I wake up to the news that Forrest had beaten Liverpool. And yes, maybe it was a teeny bit of a fluky win because if you make your chances in the first half, uh, you get it. But then when he gets the uh, go-ahead goal... And uh, everyone says, yeah, he's a former Liverpool, but he never played for Liverpool, for, for, for Liverpool. So I'm not sure how much I should count on that. They had an egg, actually another chance as well, but a much, much needed a big win for Nottingham Forest. But one that clearly sent Liverpool into a tailspin. Another team that has not been too bad, Everton, a 3-0 over Crystal Palace. Uh, also a bit of a surprising result there. City... Um, Largely outplay Brighton. Brighton, who have not really won at that point under the Zerbi, uh, with Holland getting the first two goals. Although I have, have to say the first goal, how that was not allowed to uh, uh, was allowed to stand, I don't get because for me this is a clear shove from Holland. Uh, and then you know the penalty that's given is basically the same shove, and the end he gets a penalty. Very unlucky refereeing. However, Trossard brings Brighton uh, back at, at, the, at the beginning of the second half. And there was a time where you could see maybe, maybe, just maybe, it might work out. And then the Bruyne with a brilliant shot makes it 3-1. City go through. Um, again, good things from, from United at Chelsea. Largely outplaying Chelsea. Chelsea really are str struggling. Potter having to make a few changes to kind of get the game a little bit even to the second half. But then Ten Hag again ramps up the pressure. But when everyone thought that this uh, game is going to end up in a nil-nil, the most stupidest of penalties. I mean, the way McTominay, basically, uh, he wrestles uh, uh, down uh, uh, Broja. Of course, it's a penalty. And Jorginho uh, makes it 1-0. And at that point, I think everyone kind of thought, 
was not deserved but Chelsea will get that win. No, they don't. Because as good as uh, Kepa has been over the past few, 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 few weeks, he could not even save that corner by Casemiro. Uh, freak, freak header in the 94th minute. He just cannot get his hand. He gets his hand on it, but it goes uh, then on the post and in. And Casemiro gets an equalizer. And the way they were celebrating, it is kind of an announcement in a way that, you know, I think we have, we are now a team. We are really someone. And maybe this was even better that they got this dramatic equalizer that if they would have won this game 2-0. It could be one of those psychologically weird uh, things. Villa coming back, new coach 4-0 over Brantford, looking relieved, honest, on, 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 honestly. Leeds United another uh, gutting loss 2-3 uh, uh, at home to Fulham. At that point, Jesse Marsh was in serious uh, trouble, although Leeds United, Leeds United performances and performance statistics are much better than the actual results. So uh, that was always something to look at. Arsenal only won one against Southampton. This was the first real... I mean, yes, they lost to United uh, away from home, but, you know, losing points in Southampton was not what the doctor ordered. Schalke gave them the go-ahead goal. Maybe they could have made it, made it, made it too, but then Armstrong... Uh, gets the equalizer, really nicely played goal, and they potentially could have found a winner as well. But you know, Arsenal still keeping it together and keeping the distance to Manchester City. Uh, Leicester, another win, 4 0 at, at, at Wolves, and then the big one uh, between Spurs and New Newcastle, where Spurs for the first few minutes was were really good and created chances that didn't convert. As soon as Callum Wilson makes it 1 0. The game completely turned in Newcastle's favor. Uh, Almiron making it 2 to 2 0. Newcastle like, really taking count, count control. And despite Kane pulling one back, it was never really coming. I, I, uh, Newcastle played at home very ru routinely, looking a very, also a rather complete and exciting team at that. And then we go already into the, uh, this past weekend where uh, City beat Leicester, a Leicester team that has been on, on the rise and really held the only on, on against City, uh, thanks to a brilliant De Bruyne free kick. I mean, you cannot say it anywhere else. That ball, you cannot put any, 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 anywhere else. So uh, City still hunting Arsenal at that point, even taking the lead in the table, albeit Arsenal having a game less. Spurs, uh, anemic performance in the Champions League, you know, also is not so good over the past fast week and they found themselves down 2-0 uh, at the Cherries, however, they find a way back. Sessegnon, Davis, and then in deep in stoppage, deep in time, Bentancur. Turn it around. Conte, of course, uh, always on the edge in a way. I honestly have to say maybe this could be a performance that gets them in, but Spurs need to take a good hard look at themselves because it looks very Mourinho-esque for them. Uh, that The Conte magic is not working as it actually should or as um, uh, people would probably expect. The game that probably most uh, were looking forward to is, of course, uh, Potter's return with Chelsea to Brighton, uh, with uh, Brighton under the Zerbe having no uh, win so far and Chelsea having no loss. Well, I guess Potter was planning still for Brighton because the way Chelsea held Brighton. Yes, Trosas give 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 gives the first goal, but then it was really well played, but then two it's two on goals that give a Brighton a 3-0 lead. And Chelsea not looking great in any anyway. They get one back through Harvards, but then uh, in the stoppage time it never looked look at as the comeback is really on. Uh, and Patrick Rose then stumbles one across the line uh, in stoppage time to make it a 4-1 win. Their first one win since Potter left and uh, Chelsea get their first loss. It's one of those weird things. I don't even want to call a perfect revenge, but you know, everyone was uh, at Brighton was of course giddy because, you know, he turned on us. No, he did very well for you and he, he needed a, a bigger job. Again, Newcastle. It's a Callum, a Callum Wilson penalty that sets them off. Um, that was deep in the step of the for the first half, but then they make it a proper stroller with Wilson, Jolint, and again Almiron scoring uh, four against Aston Villa. And this was an Aston Villa team that was actually quite good last uh, on the weekend before. So interesting stuff for sure. We gotta talk Liverpool against Leeds, namely the first goal. What 
What is Gomez doing? He playing the ball back and without him looking where all all is it, it goes past Alisson and Rodrigo can tap it in. Then Liverpool get the equalizer. And I have to say for most of the game, then Liverpool had more of the game and created chances. However, there was nothing where I, I said this wasn't like must score, but you know, there were chances there. It it seemed like it's a matter of time until Liverpool score, but as it always goes. If you don't score, you may end up conceding. That's exactly what happened. 18 at me. It was totally against the run of play. Yes, Bamford had a pretty good, good, good chance before. He had a complete squander. And, Le and I think Leeds played overall very, very intelligently in this game. But it did not look like they're going to win this one. On the other side, I mean, Liverpool, they just thought they, they kind of escorted the player to the goal line. And Somerville had, it was almost easy to score this winner uh, mad scenes and yes as I said uh, Klopp not knowing what really to say after that one and I think Liverpool is very much soul searching uh, uh, therefore on the other side I don't necessarily want to be the next team that plays Liverpool as well Arsenal take an early lead again through Mart Martin then he really thought that um, Forrest might get something however in the second half to turn it on Reese Nelson, two goals in within three minutes. Then Thomas Partey with a great shot. Makes it 4 57. That was the game. Then Udegaard makes it 5. And yeah, Nottingham is probably going down. And then, I already mentioned it, um, a really nice Rashford goal. Give uh, uh, United a win over West Ham. They were better in the first. and so second half again, West, West Ham um, failing to score. However, United also looking... Overall, to be honest, also quite comfortable. So, so many games that they will talk. So the current standings are now still Arsenal up top, uh, City and Spurs. However, I think we should probably more look at the adjusted standings because it's a rather uneven table. Um, because we had Newcastle in the, in the top four, but you know, uh, United have the game in hand, which actually might push them, uh, or if they should win that, they would uh, push above Newcastle. But still, Newcastle very much on the up. Liverpool only mid-table at this moment. Uh, Chelsea, Brighton back uh, again with a game here. Fulham also really high up. up. So it's really, really interesting. For me, the most interesting is that Spurs have not looked good, but they're still in third place. They had a really good start, but now it's coming a little bit, bit, bit apart. Maybe it's just a blip that sometimes happens that Arsenal and City at this moment are not having. On the bottom, a uh, huge boost for Leeds. Uh, Leicester slowly moving out, as we will see in the expect saying they're not. I don't think they will be the rele relegation fodder. However, it looks really, really dire for Wolves and Forest. And yes, yeah, Southampton mm, could get implicated as well. Let's see who who are the teams that um, the model would see. Uh, going down, it is actually Wolves, Bournemouth, and Forest. Although Bournemouth, uh, we gotta, gotta, gotta see if they can keep it up. Uh, but Southampton dangerously down there, and Leeds with that big win moving up. Um, up top, we have now Arsenal ahead of Liverpool. Finally, I am tempted to say, uh, with Spurs still in this fourth spot. You see Newcastle in seventh. I think this top seven could look, but we have to see. The season is still very, very, very long. We have uh, only uh, about a third of the season is played. So, you know, there's loads to go for. I give you the matches for the next two weeks. We have, of course, Spurs against Liverpool. Uh, that's the big name match for the next week. Both need a win. Both need a win and it will not be an easy one for sure. Um, if you see Arsenal against Chelsea is another... Pretty big, big, big one, and that might be a stumbling stock. I think that I would even argue, argue it's bigger than Spurs against as Liverpool at the moment, but you know, we shall see. And then the weekend after, uh, if I'm looking, uh, yeah, well, I don't really see a big one to go to send us off in the World Cup. We have City against Brentford. Might be an interesting one. I see an easy win there. Uh, don't even talk about Liverpool, Southampton. Uh, Spurs against Leeds, maybe. Um, we have Newcastle against Chelsea. That's probably the one to pick out from this uh, bunch. Uh, Wolves, Arsenal should be foregone conclusion, I have to say. And I also think that uh, despite Fulham being good confirmed, that United should actually win that one. So yeah, that was it. Three runs from the Premier League in roughly 20-20 minutes. Please... 
let, let me know anything that I missed or that you would like to add in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!